Welcome to the Lore Sworn War College for Hearts of Iron 4. You're watching our series on division design, and this is Lesson 202, Battalion Breakdown. In our last video, we went over what all of the stats attached to battalions do and what they mean. In this video, we're going to go through each type of battalion individually and show what they do to those stats to prepare you for making good divisions. For the sake of demonstration, I've created a save where I cheated to unlock every technology up to about 1941, which allows us to show off most battalion types. I also didn't use any doctrines, so keep in mind that based on which doctrines you choose and where you are in the tech tree, some of these stats might change. To help demonstrate the effects of adding each individual battalion, I went ahead and created this test division. This is a basic 10 combat with binary infantry division that starts with 5 normal leg infantry battalions. By adding battalions to this division, and swapping out the infantry for other core unit types, we can see how the stats change and what the advantages and disadvantages of different battalion types are. Now a standard leg infantry battalion you can see has very few weaknesses. It doesn't really subtract from any of our stats except for weight, production cost, and combat width, and it has very high defense as compared to other battalions in the game, but it's also not particularly specialized at doing one thing exceptionally well. Before we go any further with line battalions, let's look at the different support companies that we could add. Support Anti-Air mainly adds air attack, which allows you to deal damage to planes and also reduces their effect on your ground troops for things like close air support. Slightly increases defense, breakthrough, soft attack, and hard attack, increases supply use, and decreases organization. It also gives you a little bit of HP and a significant amount of piercing. Support Anti-Tank, predictably, mainly increases your hard attack, but also gives a slight bonus to defense, soft attack, HP, and piercing. It slightly reduces organization and increases weight and training time. Support Artillery is probably one of the most important support battalions in the game, since it's the only way to get artillery onto a unit like motorized infantry without having to slow all of the unit down to the speed of the artillery, which is usually four, the same as basic leg infantry. You get a significant bonus to defense and a huge bonus to soft attack, as well as a small bonus to breakthrough and hard attack, while increasing your supply use, weight, and training time, as is pretty much par for the course with these support battalions. Engineer companies are probably one of the most important support companies you can have. In addition to adding defense, breakthrough, soft attack, hard attack, and entrenchment, they also give you a large bonus to attack and defense in fortified locations, rivers, amphibious landings, forests, hills, jungle, and marshes. They do reduce your organization significantly, however. Recon companies are also extremely important. And engineering and recon companies, it's worth noting, are two of the only support companies that don't require you to add motorized equipment to your division to use them. So if you're playing a small nation that can't really spare a lot of factories to produce motorized, Engineer and Recon are going to be your bread and butter. They increase defense, breakthrough, soft attack, and hard attack, as well as HP and reliability, but most importantly they increase your reconnaissance, which increases the chances that your units will pick a good tactic. They also reduce your organization by a fair amount. Military police are one of the most specialized companies in the game, and you might not actually ever make use of them depending on which country you're playing. They increase your defense, breakthrough, soft attack, hard attack, and suppression, as well as adding a 30% suppression bonus. This basically means the efficiency with which you can keep partisans from messing up your infrastructure in areas you've conquered from hostile nations. Maintenance companies do one thing and one thing only. They increase your reliability by a whopping 30%, meaning you'll see much fewer breakdowns in mechanical equipment. Field hospitals increase your trickleback by 30% and your EXP loss by 20%, while increasing your HP slightly and reducing your organization by a significant amount. 
This means you'll be able to make the most of your manpower and have more elite units overall. And this is one of my favorite support companies to attach to just about anything. The logistics company is great for fighting in low supply areas or behind enemy lines. And it decreases your supply usage by a significant 20% while also decreasing your organization by a significant 8.3. And finally, signal companies add slightly to your HP and reliability, but mainly exist to increase your initiative. Another thing worth noting about support companies is that they can be parachuted, meaning you can attach any of these to a paratrooper division and not have to worry about whether or not they're going to be able to get where they need to go, which is not the case for most full line battalions. Now let's take a look at some of these line battalions. Just for the sake of understanding terminology, each one of these vertical rows is called a regiment, and the individual units you add to them to make up a regiment are battalions. If you hear the word companies, it's usually referring to support units, which are slightly smaller. Now infantry battalions include lion versions of a lot of the support companies we just went over, like anti-air, anti-tank, artillery, and rocket artillery. In general, these versions are going to have more of a punch to them, but also cost more equipment. They're not parachutable, and they will slow down your divisions. For the sake of comparison, let's create a division with each of these types of support units, and then replace it with a line unit to see how the stats change. So here's a division with one unit of support anti-air. If we remove it and instead add a line anti-air, as you can see all of the core stats that it adds are going to go up significantly. However, it'll increase the weight of the unit, the combat width, and the manpower and equipment required by a fairly significant amount. As you can also see, it's made our movement and attack worse in all of these rough terrain type areas because it's much harder to get a line battalion around than it is to get a small support unit. And that's going to hold true for pretty much all of the towed heavy equipment type of battalions that you can add to your division. Now, the rest of these infantry battalions fall into the Special Forces category, meaning they're good at one particular type of combat especially, although in most cases their base stats are better than normal infantry. Paratroopers can be used if you have air superiority to drop behind enemy lines. Marines are really good at fighting in any situation involving water, including amphibious landings, attacking across rivers, and fighting in a marsh. Whereas Mountaineers, predictably, have better movement, attack, and defense in hills and mountains. To see how they compare to regular leg infantry, we'll go ahead and replace all of these infantry battalions with each type of special forces, and see how that changes the stats of the division overall. So a division of just paratroopers has less HP, less defense, and less breakthrough, but gains organization and recovery rate, has lower supply use, and better soft attack. A division made up of just marines has significantly lower HP, but higher organization, higher recovery rate, lower supply use, higher soft attack, and higher breakthrough, although also slightly lower defense. However, the main difference is the 30% attack bonus they get to marshes, rivers, and amphibious landings. An all-mountaineer division looks very similar to an all-marine division. Lower HP, higher organization, higher recovery rate, lower defense, higher breakthrough, and higher soft attack, as well as bonuses to movement, attack, and defense in hills and mountains. Overall, Special Forces Battalions are almost an across-the-board improvement, except in HP and Defense, as compared to regular infantry. And in fact, I often like to replace my normal frontline infantry battalions with Special Forces if I can get away with it. They do also require slightly higher training time and more infantry equipment. Now let's talk about Mobile Battalions. The main one almost everyone starts with is Cavalry. And as you can see, if we replace all of our infantry with cavalry, our max speed goes up from 4 to 6.4 kilometers an hour. 
we gain a little bit of organization and a little bit of suppression, which is honestly the main thing you'll be using cavalry for. They serve as cheap, mobile partisan suppression. Slightly increased supply use, and a moderate decrease in defense and breakthrough. Honestly, I don't use cavalry a lot because they're really just slightly worse, slightly faster infantry divisions. Now, motorized, on the other hand, you'll notice have a significant difference in mobility over regular leg infantry. They can move at 12 kilometers an hour, three times as fast as the marching guys. They'll have a slight bonus to hit points, a somewhat significantly increased weight and supply use, and otherwise exactly the same stats. The guys that come out of the trucks fight exactly the same as any other infantry unit, it's just a difference in how quickly they can get where they're going. However, you lose a significant amount of movement and attack in rough terrain situations, including forests, mountains, urban areas, jungles, marshes, rivers, and amphibious. So creating an army of all motorized infantry might not be the greatest idea. They're best for overtaking large fronts of open plains and wilderness quickly, or complementing armored units. Now mechanized infantry are a slightly different story. They don't have quite the same mobility that motorized infantry do. At only 8 kilometers an hour, although that's still twice as fast as leg infantry. Their main benefit is that they gain significant bonuses to HP, soft attack, hard attack, defense, and breakthrough, as well as armor and piercing. So a mechanized infantry division versus a normal leg infantry division is no contest. The mechanized infantry will destroy any leg or motorized infantry they come up against, assuming all other factors are equal. And finally, let's take a look at armored battalions, starting with light tanks, whose main advantage is mobility. Now, compared to infantry, they have much lower HP and much lower organization. This is the main reason why creating divisions of just tanks is not always the best idea. You're usually going to want to have some infantry, probably motorized or mechanized infantry, in there to support them. They also have significantly lower defense. However, they have much higher soft and hard attack, as well as extremely high breakthrough and high armor and piercing compared to infantry. We'll go ahead and save this division so we can compare armor to other armor instead of just comparing each type of armor to regular infantry. Now these light tanks, which are the 1941 models, have a maximum speed of 14, which is actually even higher than motorized infantry. You'll want to keep in mind the speed of each level of tank when you're trying to decide what to pair them with. For example, although we have access to mechanized infantry right now, it would be much better to pair motorized with these light tanks because mechanized are going to slow them down significantly. If we want to use mechanized infantry, we might as well pair them with a slower, heavier variant of tank. Medium tanks, in comparison to light tanks, are going to change the stats fairly predictably. We're down to a max speed of 9, which pairs pretty well with the 8 km per hour mechanized infantry we have right now. Our weight and supply use went up, but so did our soft attack, our hard attack, our defense, breakthrough, armor, and piercing values. And if we go ahead and save that to compare a medium to a heavy tank, once again, we'll see fairly predictable results. The speed is down to 6 kilometers an hour, which is about the same as cavalry. And that's pretty par for the course for heavy and super heavy tanks. They're not going to really gain you an advantage in speed, but they'll make up for that in how much of a punch they can pack. Soft attack goes up by 17 in comparison to medium tanks, hard attack by 55. We also gain 5 defense, 5 breakthrough, 30 armor, and 30 piercing. Also keep in mind, though, that tanks take the same sort of movement and attack bonuses that we saw on our motorized units. It's also worth noting that these stats can be changed by creating tank variants, some of which are just straight upgrades, some of which actually change the role of the vehicle altogether. 
For example, if we change all of these medium tanks into medium tank destroyers, we get a very different type of specialized division here. Soft attack is down by a significant amount, but hard attack is also up by a decent amount, and piercing goes way up. Perfect for killing other tanks. We won't go through all of the armored variants, but it's also worth looking at, for instance, self-propelled artillery. So, let's start with a mechanized infantry battalion. And then say we wanted to add a regiment of line artillery. As you can see, we can't really take advantage of the speed bonus of the mechanized infantry because the line artillery is slowing us down to 4 kilometers an hour. We are getting significant bonuses to soft attack, however. Now, let's compare that to if we swapped it out for uh, medium self-prepared artillery, which is based on the medium tank chassis. Our max speed goes up to 8, so basically we've doubled the quickness of this division. Our soft attack is also significantly improved, even over line artillery. Our hard attack goes down slightly, our defense by a decent amount, and our breakthrough by a decent amount. We also gain a fair amount of armor. To finish off, let's take a quick look at the tech tree. You'll want to pay attention to individual models and upgrades because what's true for medium tanks in 1939 might not be true in 1943. For example, if we take a look at the M3 Lee, the first medium tank that the U.S. unlocks, we have a maximum speed of 8 kilometers per hour, whereas a Sherman has a max speed of 9 kilometers per hour, and a T20 has a max speed of 10 kilometers per hour. So you might want to adjust what tanks fill what roles as the war goes on. Similarly, mechanized infantry starts out with a base speed of 8 kilometers per hour, but can eventually be upgraded to 10 and eventually 12 kilometers per hour, which makes it basically as quick as a motorized division. So by 1945, it's pretty safe to drop all of your motorized and replace them with the much better fighting mechanized divisions. Now that you know what all the battalions do, we can start creating some awesome divisions. The next few videos will focus on building specific types of divisions, such as infantry, armored, and special forces.